and Prince Harry has deviously claimed before that there was enough material for him to write a second spiteful book. And according to a royal source, this veiled threat has not been forgotten by the firm. Now, they told GB News presenter Camilla Tomenay in the Daily Telegraph, there's not a lot of trust left to allow the family to maintain a good and open relationship. How do you speak openly without it ending up in volume two? But should they actually be fearing a memoir from Meghan Markle? Indeed, Camilla writes that if this were to happen and the Duchess is minded to finally name the royal racist, then all hell will likely break loose again. So, Angela, they've just lost this $20 million Spotify deal. I'm told that Netflix want to pull the plug on their $100 million TV deal as quickly as they can. So there's a real risk now for the royal family, isn't there, that the poisoned pen is going to be pulled out for Meghan's memoir. I think they're going to outsmart the memoir because, actually, the way she's been attacked by so many of American people who are involved in, you know, um, uh, uh, the sort of all sorts of people who help her get success, um, then... Um, you know, she's lost all her credibility. And I think that they will, one, not listen to it. People won't believe it because she's got a reputation for telling mm -hmm. untruths or exaggerating hugely, so it doesn't make any sense. And I think that would just make it as bad as it is. I don't think it will move it backwards in any way because they're used to it now. They see that the public, not just here but in America and around other countries, are, are saying that she's not talented, she's no good. You know, she has told lies. She's even, you know, a lot among black people, they say mm. that she's using them for her own aid. Well, I heard she's Trevor not... Phillips yes. say that this week, which was an extraordinary intervention from the former Equalities Commission. Yes. Aid. She said she, has to, she had to learn how to be black, you know, because she wasn't until she got married, until she met the royal family. Um, and he was very much against her and how she's behaved. And I think, you know, it'll... There'll be a, a lot of sales because people will want to know what she said. But I think it will you be You think disaster. her days of causing damage to the royal family are yes. over? How many times can you hit them? You see, you could see at the coronation that they um, ignored Harry. He wasn't popular. They just got on with it. But people are laughing. There's crowds coming when Charles or Catherine or William go anywhere. They don't need them, and that must be very, very painful. So they want to up the action, but it's too late. Now, look, after growing reports that Netflix would follow Spotify in cutting these ties with Harry and Meghan, a spokesperson to the streaming platform said, our exciting journey with them isn't ending any time soon. That's what I call a bit of a fudge, a bit of a fudge, because clearly they're under pressure to try and back Harry and Meghan publicly. They haven't announced the couple's plans, though. However, in the works is apparently a feminist retelling of Miss Havisham, the iconic character from Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. And speaking to the Daily Mail, an English professor and Dickens expert warned the Duke and Duchess against going woke with the famous tale as it will end up, quote, uh, being a voyeuristic misery. But, Angela, that's exactly what they're planning to do. This is a woke version of Great Expectations. Yeah. That's exactly what She's it's going to be. She's going to turn Miss Havisham into a feminist and the difficulty she has living in a man... You know, men are more important than women. I mean, it's got no chance. The original um, film of that in 1946 has outshone everything and there's been two or three other ones and they've all been absolutely hit at by the critics. And this is an absurd um, way of doing something because it's been shown before recently in the B on the BBC, and you can't keep on doing this. I mean, she's doing the thing that happened before. And that was a woke before, version, and everyone and hated it. Hated it. But you can't change Dickens like that. You can't sort of put this woman... I don't think either of them have got the ability to do that. They're not knowledgeable enough. They're not literary people that take a Miss Havisham who's sat looking at her wedding cake for decades... Um, 
back to when she was a young woman and how she was fighting against the men. This is what Meghan likes, you know, she likes saying that everybody against women, when in fact, I mean, she's done phenomenally well because nobody's been against her, i.e. her husband let her run wild. Um, and it's, it's, again, a nonsense. They pick up things that um, Netflix have cancelled, and I think this is another one. They haven't agreed to it yet. No. But it's going to be... Well, they haven't agreed to any of them. They ideas. haven't, but it's going to be rubbish, isn't it? You can tell that. Well, if it even You've happens. got to be... I don't think it's even going to happen, Angela, because no. Netflix is so wary now of this whole go-woke, go-broke phenomenon. Yeah. And I think it sounds utterly awful, and they won't want to waste tens of millions of dollars no. on, a, on an awful project. The other thing is that if she's going to be... A, um, behind the camera, which has said mm. they're going to do that now, no one be slightly interested because, you know, the directors and producers aren't the ones who get people, you know, standing in the street and shouting and cheering them. You know, it, it's, she's got no experience mm. to do that, no delicacy, no insight. Mm. Um, it's just not there. So it's a waste of time and, and money. And what's been fascinating this week is you've actually seen Prince William doing all of the social justice and the public service, which is, of course, what Harry and Meghan promised that they would be able to do when they cut free of the royal family. We've seen none of it from them. Virtually no public service, no. virtually no social justice. What do you make of Prince William's project to end homelessness within five years? Because lots of folk, Angela, are saying, look, this is bold, it's daring, it's audacious. Some concerns, though, that maybe it does wade a little bit into the area of politics? Yes, and I think those are anti-monarchy people who say that. I mean, this is something that he really wants to do. This is, he says it's his life work. And Catherine has her life work about dealing with young mm. families and young children. Early childhood, yeah. And both of them actually have homelessness in it, in the things that they want to cover. So they can work very well together but not tread on each other's feet. And he's really wanted to do this. I mean, I remember when I was talking to Prince Harry when I was writing his biography, and he said to me, no-one in our family wants to be king, but somebody's got to. But William's always telling me he feels he needs to make a difference. He doesn't want to cut ribbons, he doesn't want to come and go in five minutes. He really wants to make a difference. Well, here is a difference. He can really do something, not because he's got three huge places to live in and he's got umpteen hundred million thousand pounds of t to live on, but because he really cares about people and he can understand it. And also, he can bring people together. So he can bring all sorts of people together to discuss it and to help. He's not going to try and, you know, take over no. politics in any way. No, indeed. But what's so ironic, Angela, is it's exactly exactly the sort of project that Prince Harry could have been doing, but instead he's been wasting his time not doing anything for Netflix. Angela Levin, uh, Royal Biographer, thank you so much. Thank you.